What is good? We're back. We got Austin Abbott. We're going full on remote on you, but we have top trade targets at every position this week. Really, it's just kind of some of our favorite trade targets at every position. Uh, we're going to go quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end. Not in that order, but we're going to give you a player at each position in fantasy football. And we're talking dynasty, of course. Quarterback is going to be geared a little bit to more towards super flex conversation, but I'm sure it could be one quarterback driven as well. So, Austin, how are we feeling today? You feeling good about this one? You ready to roll? Yeah, man, absolutely. How are you, Casey? Oh, couldn't be better if I was you. So let's let's get it going. <laughs> You're about to get your first start for the 49ers. You and, you know, Ricky, nobody's ever seen Austin and Ricky Pierce all in the same place at the same time. So, man, you got to be excited. It, it was so good to see him on the field. Uh, it was. What a, what a wild, you know, turn of events it's been for the 49ers this season. But, hey, hmm. I think he's got a golden opportunity moving forward. Unfortunate news with Ayuk, but um, I'm pumped. Man. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm really happy for Ricky and uh, yeah, I'm just eager to see him play ball, but uh, I can kick things off, man. You want me to? Well, I was going to say is is we're going to go uh, wide receiver, mm -hmm. running back, quarterback, tight end. Is was was Ricky Pearsall going to be your your top trade target this week? <laughs> no, not not honestly, not terrible. But no, I won't, I'm going to yap about a, a player who's much more relevant, a much more proven mm -hmm. asset. I'm going to I'm, I'm going to yap about Chris Olave. All right, so hit me. I don't think that Chris Olave has ever been cheaper, I would argue, in, in his entire career, right? Like, you you want to go back, let's say, three years during your dynasty rookie drafts. He was probably going, like, 107, 108, 109 range, if we're talking super flex, like mid to late first. That was the cheapest you could have ever gotten Chris Olave over the past three years. Right now, I would make the argument, it's very close, right? So here's a player who has put up three consecutive games this season of 80 plus yards, right? Like when you think Chris Olave this year, you're like, man, he's, he really hasn't done much. It's like, no, he's actually been, you know, he, he's been boom or bust. But like, again, those three weeks, I think it was weeks two through four, 80 plus yards. Like that's, that's again, what we want to see. It's that consistent production that not only has he done it for a, a few weeks this year, but he had done it every year to start his career, right? The first two seasons, he's north of a thousand plus receiving yards, north of 70 plus receptions. Uh, you know, how, how do you look? I, I don't think Chris Olave necessarily has the highest of high ceilings, but I think that he has a very high floor. And I think that he's, you know, again, a proven asset. Uh, he's a clear wide receiver one. I haven't even talked about Rashid Shahid, who is now on the IR. Mm -hmm. Um, and a few other things regarding Chris Olave, and I'll wrap it up, Casey. Seventh easiest strength of schedule moving forward for Chris Olave. That's a beautiful thing. Derek Carr returning relatively soon. You love to see it. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I just, you know, I, you know, it's of course there's a dip due to the concussion. Uh, you know, it's people probably feel like they're burned. People are probably frustrated with him, and I get it. But now's the time to buy, man. Again, he's he's not going to be cheaper. I just I view him as more of like a mid to late wide receiver two moving forward for the rest of this season. I think that's where the production's going to be at. And you know, some of his advanced metrics this season are not bad at all, right? Like fantasy points per target versus man was very solid, one point six eight. Uh, there was there was uh, his catchable target rate was good. Contested catch rate seventy five percent this year. Granted, that's only off of four targets, relatively small sample size, but that's fourth in the NFL. Like, you know, and that's not even necessarily Chris Olave's game, right? He's mm -hmm. look, man, go buy Chris Olave. I don't think he's going to be really any cheaper than this moving forward. So uh, why not? That that yeah, you no. know, that's for dynasty and redraft, by the way. Yeah, I mean that's that's going to be a lot of what we focus on on this show and, and really in the show in general, uh, you know, buying, buying the dips when, when the public's kind of down on these guys and Chris Olave is somebody who everybody is just considers a lot of, I see it all at the, he's a bust, he stinks. And it's like, no, Chris Olave is a really good player. We've even seen it at points this year. Like you've pointed out, the saints have been kind of on, on the schneid a little bit here. We're not sure exactly when Derek Carr is coming back, but we know we didn't even see a lot like a rattler went out there with nothing to work with really. And they got beat up by the Broncos this past week. We'll kind of see how that goes. Rattler gave a little endorsement to Chris Olave. Basically, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if you see a, a million targets to Chris Olave this week. And Rattler, you know, he'll he'll he can sling it. 
he might not be NFL ready or or even maybe worthy. Well, that time will tell. But he he was QB one uh, for a minute, and and he can get it down the field and, and spin it. So I agree with you. Chris Olave stays on the buy list for me, and and I think the biggest point there is that you know he's the lowest he's probably ever been. There's a lot of people who don't have any patience. We saw it like by week three that people were out as Rashid Shahid, the wide receiver one there. Like, I, I don't know. All I know is Chris Olave is a good route runner. He can get deep. He can do the damage. Um, we've seen it throughout his career. So right now you swoop in, you buy the dip, you be a little patient. Like we're, we're talking twos at this point, I think, for Chris Olave for some people, right? That Some people would just be excited to get two twos for Chris Olave right now, I think, right? And I don't even think anybody's expecting a first at this point for Olave for, in some cases, right? So that's that's when you want to. I'm not saying that that's what everybody would do, and uh, that would be crazy. But like, would two twos be you know enough for you to get Chris Olave in, in the streets out there? I think it's a little off. I I, I think even though people seem to be more bearish, I still think his price is, okay. you know, well, well, let's just call it a late first. That's kind of where I think consensus is at right now. And, you know, of course, if I'm an owner of Chris Olave, I'm not going to sell, man. I'm not, I'm not going to yeah. go sell for a late first because you hope that first turns into a wide receiver who puts up north of 70 receptions and a thousand yards every year and is locked in as a wide receiver one for his offense moving forward. So that's, uh, that, that's really how I feel about Chris Olave. Right. No, I, I like it. I think we'll see Olave bounce back, but but by the dip right now. I'm going to give you a little bonus wide receiver. Ended up with a lot of this guy on, on some rosters and Thrash as well, who we're going Cedric Tillman here with a quick little bonus one. Obviously, he did well this past week. We'll see what happens, but go see if you can explore like a third round pick for Cedric Tillman and get a conversation started. Uh, this is a big bodied outside receiver that can get you downfield. He's got some good route running prowess. He had 12 targets this past week, eight receptions. Obviously, Amari was moving on. And, you know, again, I just happened to be stockpiling some Brown receivers on a lot of deeper dynasty teams. I like Tillman. I like Thrash. Both of them ended up being relatively cheap. And Amari has now moved on. We'll see what happens with if Judy can end up being the guy or if Elijah Moore can step up or, you know, any of those kind of things. But Tillman looked good in his first outing as the guy. He he was out wide 75.6% of the time. His air yard share was 36.7% of the team. This is just week seven. That was number one. His target share percentage was 26.99. That was number two. His team yardage market share percentage was 29.2%. That was number one. His yards per route run, 1.80. That was ridiculous. First downs per route run, 0.67. That was third, but really it was second because Aikens had four targets and he was number one. You know, Najoku was in there as well, which could easily be a name on my tight end top buy list with Amari out of town. I'm not going that route, but I, I don't I, I would love a nice little buy for Joku. I think he's gonna have some all these numbers that I was reading one or two on. It was Joku and Tillman this whole week with DTR in there. Now we're gonna get Jameis in there, who's you know, we know he's gonna make mistakes, but is 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 probably gonna YOLO it. Uh, more than a few times coming up. And then first read target percentage, 31.3% for Cedric Tillman, tied for first on the team, again, with David Njoku. So uh, go go explore some Cedric Tillman if you can. This is you know mostly dynasty and in redraft. Some people have probably picked him up, so maybe some people put some waiver fab on him. But if you have room and nobody's picked up Cedric Tillman, go ahead and add him. All right, little bonus feature for you there. I, I'd throw the third out, see if I could get something rolling. So... Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. Uh, let's go Javante Williams. I'm going to switch to the running back okay. and I'm going to go Javante on this one. On the last show, I believe we put out, I'm not sure which show went out first, but I we, we had done a, a draft and see where guys are currently going in Dynasty versus where they were going. And and Javante was so far down. And I, I, I made it a point of like, he feels like a penny stock right now. Like the values down on Javante, people love Javante, which is another thing that I kind of like to do when, when the court of public opinion really liked a player and then it dips a little bit people are like squirrels they'll just, as soon as he's back they'll be like oh yeah i love javante again but you know they're so down on him right now because he's not producing at the high level that you thought he was weeks four through seven javante's been the rb12 right he's put up 10 16 4.6 and 26 now he scored a bunch of touchdowns last week they routed the uh routed the saints on on thursday night 
you know, his snap share percentage through those weeks, four through seven, 62.3%. That was 14th overall fantasy points per game, 14.5. His target share percentage, 15.3% out of running backs. That's third overall out of all running backs. So really high target percentage over there. His attempt percentage is only at 43.8% and being on the field 62% of the time. The next closest guy is 19% there. This offensive line trending in the right direction. You got Garrett Bowles, Ben Powers, Forsyth. The center's a little shaky. Miners, a right guard, and, and McGlinchey's back in action. Now I'm Niners guy, so McGlinchey can be a little shaky. But PFS right now has him as a 10th best offensive line uh, moving into week eight here. I think you had a rookie quarterback, a new system coming in here. Bo Nix is now being established that he's a threat to run on the ground. Bo Nix has 255 yards rushing. Javante Williams has 301 yards rushing. So I feel like that's going to potentially loosen things up a little bit. Sean Payton was giving Javante Williams some flowers. I think you're going to see more and more of Javante take a hold of this backfield a little more. They're going to throw it to the running back. We knew that. Uh, Javante saw f- like 45 receptions last year coming off of a terrible knee injury. And this year he's right on pace to be smashing those kind of things. He's he's in the last year of his contract as well for Denver. So he could be going somewhere else. He's 24. But to the Bo Nix point, like Sean Payton was suggesting that maybe, you know, the Saints were maybe in a little bit more of a zone this week. Uh, just to try to mitigate some of the rushing for Bo Nix out there. So again, that points to me, Bo Nix getting uh, a feel for the NFL, making things happen with his legs, maybe opening things up a little bit more for Javante Williams in this run game. And they just haven't been a heavy run team. I think they're around 19th in rush attempts per game. And this isn't even, I'm not even saying all this because it's just Javante for this year. I think Javante could probably help you through some weeks this year, but it, it's mostly a dynasty play for a long term. Uh, they do have the Panthers this week, so I'm sure you could get another decent week out of Javante here. They do, you know, they have the Chiefs twice. Uh, they got the Ravens the following week after that. So a, a few <laughs> tough games on the schedule. But, you know, if you if you did everything by what a defense does against what run, according to fantasy points, you know, we wouldn't even have to play. So. Uh, you know, th- th- those kind of things can get overblown sometimes about, you know, strength of schedule. But the Broncos are four and three right now with a rookie quarterback learning as he goes uh, in being integrated into this system. Uh, you're seeing Troy Franklin get a little bit more involved. We're starting to hopefully see this offense grow and 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 take steps forward. You're, you're getting into the back half of the season. Rookie getting a little more comfortable. I think Javante Williams has been pretty startable, for, you know, for the most part. I think a lot of people have been pretty scared of him he gave you a 4.6 a week uh two weeks ago but like i said 10 16 4.6 and then 26 so i think better times of javante are coming and better times in dynasty for javante are coming again you mentioned maybe the lowest point of of chris olave's stock i think we're at that same point with javante williams as well which is you know going to be the theme of when we're talking about buying guys that's what we're typically going to be doing i could have came out here and said hey go buy aaron jones he's on rb1 trajectory but it's like yeah everybody knows aaron jones is doing well. You want to buy an older running back from a team uh, who's, you know, maybe out of the playoffs or heading out of the playoffs, you know, by all means, but Javante Williams could be a now and a later uh, is something that I really kind of like about Javante Williams right now. So going to buy Javante Williams, I I would, I would no problem purchasing for a two uh, of any sort for Javante Williams here. No, I love it, man. I, uh, every week, Casey, I put out a tweet. It's 25 facts about each individual week. And I was diving into Javante, right? I, I, I found him really interesting. And, and here's one specific, uh, little paragraph that I wrote about Javante. I noticed he scored the second most fantasy points this week in his entire career at 26.1, 88 rushing yards this past week and two touchdowns. They were both season highs. Now, Javante, I think he led the NFL with touches without a touchdown. It was 79 Mm -hmm. touches going into the week. If he wasn't first, he was like top three on that list. But I think he was number one. I'd have to go back and look. But uh, yeah, coming into Sunday, Javante, you know, he hadn't scored a single touchdown on the season. So uh, I felt like, you know, this positive regression was inevitable to, you know, I I just, I thought things were, were really clicking for not only Bo Nix for Denver's offense, just, I just felt like things were going to continue to, to, you know, mesh and improve as the season goes on. Right. And and, Hey, it has not been pretty man. Denver, it's been ugly, uh, but they're getting it done, man. I I know Bo Nix has not looked great or far from it, but Hey, they're winning games. And that is all that matters, right? You know, at least for NFL purposes. So, uh, yeah, good for, De- the, good for Denver, man. 
Yeah. So I, I, I like that one. Uh, you know, there's some trades on dynasty daddy right now. There's, you know, a second for, for Javante, there's De- Devante Adams for Javante. You know, there's, I think I saw one that was maybe Cooper cup for Javante today. You know, those are older receivers. And if you're winning now, you probably don't want to give those guys up, but you know, we know how the, the year ebbs and flows with the older guys. They're great in the beginning of the season when they're putting up points. Then when your team sucks, you're like, I gotta get this older guy off my team. So not a bad play there. So, Austin, hit me with some quarterback love of your one of your favorite buys uh, right now at the position. Yeah, and, and this was tough, man. As as I was I was looking through a lot of quarterbacks, um, I, I landed on Anthony Richardson, and this is a tough sell, right? I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to lie to you, right? Because I could very easily make a strong argument on why I could be out, on why I would want to pivot and just move on from Anthony Richardson. I get it. But uh, here, here's the good news, at least. We saw 14 rushing attempts from Anthony Richardson this past week. 14 rushing attempts. He's a quarterback, man. I know a lot of people in the comments are going to be like, no, he's actually a running back. But hey, <laughs> I, don't, I don't care what position you play, man. If you're, if you're running the ball 14 times, I probably want you on my fantasy team. Now, mm. with that being said, after running the ball 14 times this week, he still finished as the QB 23. That's impressive. Like that, that's real bad. <laughs> that is really <laughs> impressive. Um, but, you know, in fantasy, dynasty, whatever it may be, we always want to chase volume, Casey, right? The volume is always going to be king. Opportunity often leads to more fantasy points. Uh, and here's a little stat for you. 22-year-old Anthony Richardson, it was his ninth start, by the way. Now, he had 129 passing yards, did not look good against Miami, but Miami is the number one pass defense in the NFL. We have a few other quarterbacks that have played against Miami this year. You had Will Levis, threw for 25 yards. You had Jacoby Brissett, 160. Josh Allen, 139. Trevor Lawrence, 162. So when you see Anthony Richardson throw for 129, while it looks terrible in the box score, when you add context to it, it's not the worst thing in the world. Granted, like you can say, Austin, Richardson's never thrown for 225 passing yards in his nine starts. I get it. All things considered, he's only had nine starts, right? Like we are still so early, man. He's basically played half a season. And, you know, there's been so many injuries, like durability concerns in the middle of all of that. And, you know, it's like if we can just have him healthy for a stretch of games and let him build off of all these things. And again, build chemistry with the players. We, We see Josh Downs looks like he looks like a dude. Josh Downs mm-hmm. looks like a really good NFL. Oh, sure. and, and I felt like it was a hot take in the offseason because I was I was screaming Josh Downs is better than Adnai Mitchell. And, and that's no disrespect to Adnai Mitchell. I just think that highly of Downs. But we also didn't have Jonathan Taylor, man. It was Goodson. It was Sermon. You know, Richardson was going up against, again, the number one pass defense. Like, he was kind of going up against an uphill battle. It was an mm-hmm. ugly 16-10 to 10 win for Indianapolis. But, hey, they got the uh, dub. They got the win. He's, he got the dub, right? That's what matters most, man. And we are now moving on to the Houston Texans. Houston. Now, if you rem- Casey, if you remember, the last time he played Houston, over, 30, over 30 fantasy points. Yeah. That was week one of the season, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, look, like... He led the NFL last year in in um, fantasy points per snap. Like Richardson, you know, the, the the whole the most important thing about Anthony Richardson, the most appealing thing about him, it's always going to be his ceiling, right? It's always going to be that rushing upside. So he, I, I'll tell you what, and I'll end with this. I feel like it's going to be a while. Um, Anthony Richardson's going to continue to be a work in progress. But hey, if I can go get him dirt cheap right now, which which you absolutely can, mm-hmm. you know, these are. These are the type of players that you you want to take a chance on, right? You know, if I, I'm not necessarily sure what the price is as of right now, but I'm more than likely buying for for what consensus is selling right now. Yeah, so. I mean, I, I, there's I'm sure there's plenty of people who would sell them for a first without any issue. Uh, mm-hmm. We saw some Drake May trades for Anthony Richardson. So there's you know there's there's again the theme of an episode, the theme of a lot of episodes of what we talk about is kind of buying into a dip. And if Anthony Richardson is not for you and you want to get out and hit the eject button, that's fine. But you know, if, if you want to know how I feel about it, you can go watch the last episode that we just put out, I believe, before this one. And I, I opened up the show with probably five to ten minutes on Anthony Richardson. So I'm not going to repeat all of that. Uh, but, you know, you look at the box score on this one and you say, uh, you know, or fantasy point watcher and you say, ah, Anthony Richardson's still struggling. And it's like, you know, he had his ups and downs in this game, but there was certainly growth in this game. I, he, he, he threw some good balls in this game and made some good decisions. Uh, he made some good decisions running the ball as well um and uh, you know i trust the coaching staff there's a good o line there there's there, the, the, everything mm-hmm. around him has been built up pretty well 
So he's got a pretty good chance to succeed. And like you said, nine games and then going back to high school and college, is not, not that many more. Uh, so it's not like he's Jaden Daniels where he's played five years of college football and then comes in here, uh, finally polished, moving to two different spots and getting, you know, excellent coaching from the last few years. So Anthony Richardson, for me, it remains on the buy list and, and, until further notice. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm not scared when they're scared. I, that's when I usually pounce and buy because we, we've seen the upside and he was he's not even a nearly a finished product. Like you said, nine games isn't even a full season. I'm all in on that. And I, and I love the double down on Anthony Richardson here. So go check that show out if you want to hear a bunch more on Anthony Richardson from my perspective. So we're going to wrap it up with the tight end side of things. I know, uh, you know, maybe people don't care about the tight end anymore, but with some of the big dogs maybe struggling a little bit, and I think we're going to see some of that turn around as as the season kind of goes on here. I could go Evan Ingram without any problem, right? If you want to buy a guy who's who's a little older, who's who's crushing right now, the targets are good. Jags maybe, you know, Doug Peterson's wearing a hat now, so maybe the Jags are going to start winning. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, I mentioned Joku earlier. He, I feel like he's he'd be you know up on the buy. Otten is another interesting one there, right? Uh, oh yeah. You know, Godwin goes down. Evans is missing time. When I was going through the fantasy data point stuff, Otten was popping up a decent amount on on some of the the stats that that the analytical community really likes. So Otten's pretty interesting. But I'm going even cheaper and dirty. I'm going Hunter Henry right here. We're going to just look at week six, six and seven, where in May Drake May has taken over uh, for him, and and we'll we'll look at some season long stuff. Uh, but we saw a lot of nice positivity as May took over uh, for Hunter Henry here. So the season long target share for Hunter Henry sixteen point four. That's thirteenth. Drake May took over the last two weeks seventeen point one. That's eight out of all the tight ends, right? So moved up from thirteen to eighth. Air yard share twenty point nine percent. That was good for third. But 26.1% uh, in week six and seven, that's only good for fourth. But we saw, you know, a 6% jump in, in, in air yard growth there, right? His season-long yards per route run, 1.66. That's that's good for 17th overall. In week six and seven, we saw a 2.18 yards per route run for Hunter Henry. That's sixth overall. Targets per route run went up from 0.19 to 0.20 with Drake May at the helm from the season to week six and seven. His team yard yard market share for the year, 25.3. That's third overall for all tight ends. First read percentage here, season long, 16.2. That's 12th overall for tight ends with Drake May in there, 22% up to fifth in first read target percentage for Hunter Henry here. First downs per route run, 0.095. That, that was 12th overall for tight ends, up to 0.115. Uh, that's good for fifth in all tight ends over the last two weeks with Drake May at the helm. Uh, he's had 13.1 and 17.2 in the last two. That's good for fifth uh, in his fantasy points per reception in the last two weeks. Hunter Henry is out there, you know, doing some work with Drake May at the helm. And, and he had Texans that first week. And then he went over to London. He's got had the Jags. I believe they have the Jets this week. A good defense, but that defense is banged up as well. Um, and Hunter Henry, you know, is is the vet like the only veteran real presence that they have. And I think Drake May's figuring out that pretty quick that he's got a really nice safety blanket uh, in Hunter Henry here. Uh, so if you want some cheap potential tight end production, I think Hunter Henry is a really, really good way to go right now. And just pair him up with Drake May for the rest of the season, because we've seen this offense just really actually be able to continue drives, push the ball downfield. If Jalen Polk could catch a few balls, he'd be having a mini breakout right now. They need to keep Pop Douglas on the field. I think he was sick last week, but, you know, they don't have a whole lot of options to kill you with. And Hunter Henry's tried and true, man. Go find yourself somebody that, you know, loves you like Drake May loves Hunter Henry and you'll be all right in life. Right. Can't imagine anybody is, you know, holding on to their shares. A Hunter Henry, super strong. A few thirds might even get it done in, in like a tight end premium league right now because I don't think anybody's expecting a two for Hunter Henry, right? Oh, man, what what a hell of an ROI he's been. I mean, fifth in targets, third in slot snaps. Uh, I mean, Casey, I was just finishing up my uh, dynasty rankings, getting to the end of it, and I have Hunter Henry, Hunter Henry so far down, and I'm like, oh, this this is not right, man. I, I his production's just been way too good. The opportunity, the efficiency, man, and you know what impressed me most, like him being the tight end six. The fact that he only has one touchdown, right? I, when we yeah. talk about the, the tight end position, generally 
the touchdowns carry that position, right? That really kind of separates, you know, the big dogs from the rest of the crowd. Mm-hmm. And uh, the fact that he only has one man, like, wow. Like I, I, yeah. I was, I was looking at his numbers. I was like tight end six. Yeah. He's probably got like three, four touchdowns this year. It's like, no one. So look, man, if a few more of those go his way, Holy cow, he's going to, he, he's not going to, he's going to be like tight end three or something. Like he's, he's just been an insane ROI. And uh, he feels like, you know, when in doubt, when, when you get late in your redraft, you know, your draft every year, it's like, hey, why not, man? He, mm. You know, he's you know, he's going to be a value. So, yeah, uh, I, I love this call, Casey. Yeah. I, I think he's all reliable. Six, five, two fifty. He's just he gets mm. it done, man. It's oh, not pretty, sure. but he gets it done. Yeah, I'm going to go bonus young guy here for you, because I, I, when I was perusing through the last two weeks here for tight ends, this one really popped out to me. Uh, Jatavian Sanders right now, mm-hmm. obviously the Carolina Panthers, uh, you know, a mess. Looks like they're going back to Bryce Young this week. And, you know, it's not it's not this is not really about Jatavian Sanders this this year. Right. It's Canales uh, used Otten at a really high snap percentage, I think, first in the league last year. It's not going that way for for Sanders just yet, but he's also a rookie. And the other tight ends they have fucking stink. So <laughs> Sanders gets his opportunity these last two weeks and is looking good. The stats are fantastic. Air yard percentage, air yard share, 23.4%. That's fifth out of all tight ends over the last two weeks. Tight end or uh, target percentage, 23.2%. That's fifth for all tight ends over the last two weeks. Uh, Targets per route run, 0.35, fifth uh, for all tight ends. Team yard market share percentage, 35.5%. That's third. Uh, Yards per route run, 2.62%. That's good for third. First read target percentage, 24th or 24.3%. That's good for sixth. And his fantasy tip points per route run, 0.52. Pretty solid. So Jatavion Sanders is going out there and making the most of his opportunities. I know they just got smoked by, by the commanders there. And, you know, the week before they played Falcons in division. But the point is, is, you know, I, I've, I had a hunch Jatavion could play. We got a few weeks of Jatavion getting some love and some feature and he produced with it and you know whether or not it's a blowout or not this is a young guy who's going to grow and continue to get opportunity in this offense as Canales builds this thing up uh, I still have plenty of faith in Canales we've seen the offense operate at a decent clip with a guy like Andy Dalton if we can you know get through this season with with some people alive and come back with Deontay Leggett and you know I don't know if Thielen will stick around for another season I'm not sure where the contract is you know they got to add another piece but Sanders is going to be a piece that stays there and I I believe helps build this offense and move it forward. He was really solid and looked really good the last two weeks. So Jatavion Sanders, a little bonus, cheap young guy to uh, go and and grab and and stash away for a little later for you. I like him, man. I like it. There's a look, you know, throughout the season, there's always going to be peaks and valleys. There's always going to be ups and downs, man. You just... You got to make sure that you capitalize during the right times, you know, and, and same, look, same thing applies with draft picks, man. Right now, of course, draft picks are always going to be at an all time low, right? People are selling them. They want to go all in. They want to put the chips and they want to win, right? That's why we play. So uh, it's man, it's it's always a good time talking with you, Casey. And uh, it's, this has been a fun episode, man. Yeah, uh, we're going to we're going to do certainly more of these of our favorite trade targets every week as as we uh, press on through the season. But we're going to talk certainly get back to talking 25 prospects as well. Always a fun time talk, talking to Austin. Great, integral part of this team. If you haven't already, make sure you go check out Austin at on the Twitters at Austin Abbott. That's two B's, two T's or sorry, at Austin Abbott FF, uh, two B's, two T's and two F's. You know, half the world already is. So make sure that you're not missing out. A lot of good information over there on Twitter. And, and he's got some some good stuff ready to drop uh, for your pleasure over there. That That's going to get you even more access to Austin. So make sure you are checking all that stuff out. All right. Appreciate it, Casey. Oh, you got it, man. You're the best. Uh, if you're not already subscribed, please do so. If we we got a Patreon, a five dollar holler, we got a free pay or a free Discord. Make sure you check that out. You get a new a, an extra episode with the with the Patreon uh, every week. Right now, you're, we're going to have access to rankings. You're going to have access to rookie rankings, all sorts of good stuff. We, we we have our own ADP. We're not running it right now, but we build our own ADP in the off season. So it's a it's a blast. We do a lot of drafts over there. If you haven't already, come check it out. If you're listening and you haven't gave a five star review. What are we doing? Help your boys out. Hit that five star. It's free. It's free. You, you free loading son of a gun. Just give us the five stars and, and keep it moving. 
Uh, until next time, we'll catch you. That's Austin. I'm Casey. Jason's lurking in the weeds over here, producing this thing behind closed doors, just peeking in the windowsill. Is she in the shower? Yeah, what's going on? Um, <laughs> all right. We'll catch you next time. Peace. Peace.